right, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we, Father God, we thank you for your presence. So, oh, Father God, we thank you. Your presence is always welcome. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Lord, we thank you for uh, what you do among us. Lord, we thank you for speaking to us. Uh, we thank you for being so close to our hearts, Lord. We thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God, for the release of your gifts, Father God. We thank you for, Lord, every good gift, O oh God, that you released among us, God. We thank you for the call that each one of us has, O oh God. We thank you for commissioning us, Lord. We thank you for calling us, Lord, to be ambassadors of Christ. We thank you for calling us, O oh God, to be your spokesperson. So, God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. And at this time, Lord, we, uh, yes, Lord, we just commit today these uh, Lord into your mighty hands and we pray that um, you would speak to us that you would um, Lord add to our understanding Father God Lord let it be line upon line and precept upon precept Lord um, I just pray this morning that uh, Lord whatever we have learned uh, till now Father God that whatever Lord um, has been uh, Lord, laid upon our hearts, Lord, uh, by you, Father God, I pray that we will have a strong grip on it, Father God. Uh, we will have a strong hold on it, Father God. And I just pray that, uh, Lord, that we will not lose it, oh, Father God. And uh, no matter what happens, Lord, I pray that we will hold on and, uh, and uh, Lord, it will remain with us. The seed of your word, Lord, will take root in us and will bear fruit, Lord. Uh, I just pray this uh, over each and every one, every person here. Yes, Lord, to you be the glory and honor in Jesus matchless name we pray amen so we were talking about uh, like Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 right so it says um, uh, we must give the more earnest heed to uh, what uh, to the things we have heard right to the things that we have received to the things we have heard um, lest we drift away you know? so that's the danger that we um, what we are hearing is important and what we have heard is also uh, equally important uh, because the Lord has, um, you know, uh, released that or uh, ensured that we listen to his word. But we need to, like we see in Mark chapter 4, we need to ensure that the, the word that we receive, the revelation, the understanding, uh, the prophecies, whatever we have received, um, that we don't lose it, right? So because um, it, we can drift away. You know, if we don't have a firm grip on it, we can tend to drift away, right? Okay. Um, so let's look at um, uh, where we stopped last class. Um, okay, does anyone uh, recollect where did we stop last class? And Corinthian 14 and? 18. 14. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 14, we, um, I think we continued on till, uh, we continued on um, till verse, maybe 18. verse 9, 18, no? Okay, I, yeah, okay, I will sing with the Spirit. Okay, let's just uh, back up a little and we'll uh, uh, kind of review. It's where uh, Paul says, you know, pursue love, desire, spiritual gifts, and uh, from verse 1, and then he goes on to say uh, about uh, uh, makes a, you know a, a comparison between praying in tongues and also prophecy, right? Uh, praying in tongues and prophecy, and uh, and the reason he does that is because uh, he is um, uh, you know he's addressing one issue here. Um, he's uh, and what is that issue? The issue of praying in tongues in public uh, or speaking in tongues in public. To a gathering, right? So there's a church that is gathered, and uh, you know, and here is this uh, person who is praying in tongues, and uh, so he is. Um, uh, Paul is addressing that, right? And he's saying, okay, uh, that's great if you can do this, but um, you know, this is what uh, praying in tongue does, and this is what prophecy does, right? So he says, uh, uh, he who um, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him, however, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. So this is what happens when you pray in tongues, that you are edified. You speak the mysteries of God. You receive the mysteries of God in your spirits, in your heart, in your spirit. And, um, well, no one understands. 
and uh, but but in the spirit you are speaking mysteries uh, but when it comes to prophecy you are actually speaking edification exhortation and comfort to men to the hearer okay and so he says um, he who speaks in a tongue the next verse edifies himself or builds up himself but he who prophesies edifies the church well does pro does uh, praying in tongue have uh, 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 a benefit definitely it says there is edification but it's edific edification of the person of the self of the person who's actually praying in tongues right but when it comes to prophecy when you're prophesying who is edified the hearer is edified okay which includes the one who was prophesying but also specifically it in it's addressing the one who is receiving the prophecy or hearing the prophecy right so it brings edification exhortation and comfort to men and verse 6 it says if i come to you speaking with tongues okay so that is what he's uh, uh, again he's addressing if i come to you and if i'm speaking in tongues well watch ally profit you you know how can i bring you benefit unless i speak okay this is verse 6 unless i speak either by revelation knowledge uh, by prophesying or by teaching okay any of these four ways unless i bring these i speak to you in this how will it profit you you know uh, and then uh, and then he goes on to talk about an instrument and how a trumpet is used in battle and and you know and these need to make a definite sound or a definite uh, uh, in a note is played or when an instrument is, uh, uh, is is played it needs to make a specific sound right and only then will you be able to identify and say it is nice it is not nice uh, and uh, is talking about the trumpet which is used in battle and uh, uh, how can it make an uncertain sound you know if you if it makes an uncertain sound then people will not know it will not alert the troops it will not uh, be a call for uh, readiness for battle and so on right so he says unless you utter by the words uh, utter by the tongue words easy to understand how will it benefit Right. How will it benefit the person? So, so it is. Um, uh, so it's it's very clear that he's talking about uh, uh, addressing a gathering, or speaking in tongues to a gathering. So he goes on to say, you know, even so, you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Now, you are zealous. You have a zeal for the gifts of the spirit but let it be for the edification you know let it edify the body let it edify the gathering um, and you work you know work, let it you seek that you seek the edification of the church gathering uh, will uh, tongues edify definitely it will benefit it will profit the person who's praying in tongues but since you are in a gathering you seek to excel um, or seek to edify you know you uh, the the church and you seek to excel in that okay so and then he goes on to say you know, what is the conclusion verse 15 what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit i will also pray with the understanding and i will sing with the spirit i will also sing with the understanding um and and he goes on to say that uh, you know uh, you indeed give thanks well but the, since the person is not edified when you give thanks in tongues or sing out in tongues or pray in tongues uh, he go he also says you know i pray in tongues more than you all right uh, so it's very clear i pray in tongues i spend a lot of time praying in tongues i spend you know he's saying i pray in tongues more than you all yet in the church Okay, yet in the church, um, he says, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Okay? So that's the understanding. So he's saying, you know, if you're addressing the group, you know, you speak with the understanding or speak in a known, known tongue or known language so that the person um, understands it. Okay. So, but he also you know, um, says that um, uh, when we gather together, he, he goes on to say later, and we're going to look at that in verse 28, you can pray in tongues, you can address, but under these circumstances, okay? So let's, um, 
uh, verse 19 so yet in the uh, yet in the church sorry i would rather speak five words with my understanding that i may teach others also than 10000 words in a tongue okay okay verse 20 onwards let's read brethren do not be children in understanding however in malice be babes but in understanding be mature in the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips i will speak to this people and yet for all that they will not hear me says the lord therefore tongues are for a sign not to those who believe but to unbelievers but prophesying is not for unbelievers but for those who believe therefore if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues and there comes in those sorry there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers will they not say that you are out of your mind but if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in he is convinced by all he is convicted by all and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed and so falling down on his face he will worship god and report that god is truly among you okay? he will worship god and report that god is truly among you okay so what is he saying you know do not be uh, when it comes to uh, understanding, be mature. Be mature in your understanding. Uh, 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 do not be babes. Grow up. Right? Don't remain immature. Uh, uh, be mature. Uh, then he goes to say that uh, you know, with uh, men of other tongues, sorry, with men of uh, other tongues and other lips, I shall speak to this people. And yet for all that, they will not. Uh, so he's referring to what happened on the uh, day of Pentecost, and uh, you know this outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened, and uh, you know, and everything. Uh, there was something happened which was supernatural that they were speaking in other tongues and other languages, and then, you know, uh, in the law it is written that is with men of other tongues and other lips I will speak to this nation. So uh, Paul is referring to that, and he's saying, you know, this. Uh, uh, this is what the Lord has said earlier that this would happen. Okay, so it is a supernatural act that we will, uh, you know, the tongues are given. But the Holy Spirit can prompt the use of tongues as a sign to the unbeliever. Okay, so like how it happened that day uh, in the early church that those who had gathered there, they, they were not believers in the Lord Jesus. But they were amazed. They were. They became curious, you know, and they gathered near and they said, you know, how is how can this be that, you know, these are Galileans, but we hear them speaking in our uh, language, right? But there were others who also said that these people are drunk, which means, you know, for them, uh, it is they, there were these known languages, but there was also uh, some utterances which they felt was just gibberish and they said you know how can you know uh, these people are drunk right so they behaved right uh, what they spoke and what they heard and and uh, and they said you know these people are uh, drunk and then peter uh, uh, shares with them the word of god right so it's it is for a sign okay the speaking in uh, tongues definitely you know it will be a sign it's points to the person of Jesus. So at the end, you know, when, when Peter starts to share, he he brings uh, that message. Um, this is what happened. This is what was prophesied by the Joel, uh, by the prophet Joel. And he, and he shares all that and um, uh, shares about Christ. And, and, you know, Acts chapter three, right? It just captures that. He says that they were cut to the heart, which means that they were convicted. Right? Let's uh, read that verse. Um, yeah, sorry, Acts chapter 2, uh, and then um, verse 37, right? Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Okay, so you see that um, the uh, here, the gift of tongues, 
um, and uh, speaking in uh, other languages, you know, that's how they didn't realize they spoke and it was a known language and it drew the people who are not believers to the Lord Jesus. And they asked the question, just like that Philippian jailer, you know, what must we do? What should we do? And then Peter goes on to say, believe, repent, and you will be baptized and you will have remission of sins. So that day, there was a mighty harvest. So many people come to know the Lord Jesus, right? So we see that. So it is a sign for the unbeliever. Okay. Now, when it comes to prophecy, so Paul writes, and, and uh, let, let's just go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 14. So it says, um, if the whole church comes together and all speak with tongues, you know, those who are uninformed or unbelievers, now that's also possible, right? They will say, hey, you're out of your mind. But if all prophesy, okay, if all prophesy, then what happens? This person comes and he is convicted. The secrets of his heart are revealed. Maybe it's a word of knowledge, a word of uh, you know, word of knowledge of some prophecy, and and uh, you know the information that nobody he, that he thinks nobody knows, or he or she thinks nobody knows, is is revealed. Secrets of his heart are revealed, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. So Paul is still talking about you know in the in public gathering um, to uh, to you know to prophesy. Right. Prophecy is what will edify, and, and, and edify in the sense, uh, you know, even unbelievers will be drawn, right? But it also mentions that, you know, though tongues are for self edification, and uh, you know, we we pray and we are edified personally, it can be, you know, publicly when it's prayed, uh, uh, it, you know, it can be a, uh, it is a sign, it is a sign to the unbeliever as well, but. Um, you know, but it is. Uh, we need to know. We need to discern. We need to. Uh, uh, we we need to be aware, right? So uh, then he goes on to uh, talk about how we can actually, in public, how can we pray in tongues, right? He goes on to say that. Okay. So anyway, so he says that the secret service. This is what will happen if a person prophesies. Um, tongues can be assigned to the unbeliever, just like how it happened um, that day at Pentecost. Um, uh, but you know, when you prophesy, the whole church is prophesying. Then the secrets are revealed, and the person, uh, you know, testifies that yes, this is of God. You know, this is this cannot be, uh, this cannot be from man. There is something supernatural. Okay, right. Then um, so verse twenty six onwards, he goes on to explain you know, how can you, in a public gathering, what should you do? Okay, let's read that. How is it then, brethren? Whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. Okay. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. So let's look at that. So he's saying, you know, whenever you come together, whenever there's a gathering, okay, each of you, you know, you can come with a psalm, you have, you can come with a teaching. You know, another person has a, has a tongue, has a message in tongue, and uh, the other person has a revelation, has an interpretation, right? So if it is done like that, then it is fine. Let all tongue, let all things be done for edification. So if this will bring in edification. Right. So even if you know, uh, you know, if if there is tongues uh, spoken in a gathering, when there is interpretation, then there is edification. Right. When the tongues uh, is is uh, released and when, when spoken in tongues uh, to the uh, congregation, and when we have um, uh, interpretation and revelation, then there is edification. Okay, so he's saying, let all things be done for edification. And the, and the verse, of course, he says, what should be done, right? Verse 27, if anyone speaks, let there be two or three, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let's say there is no interpretation 
or it is no gift of interpretation, then let him keep silent in church. Okay, so that does not mean that one should not pray in tongues in church. Right? So he says, let him keep silent in church and goes on to explain what does that mean? How? Okay, let him keep silent in church and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay, so what, what is happening is not, you know, speaking or releasing a message in tongues for the congregation, but he's praying in tongues. Um, you know, he's praying personally and he's praying to God. So that is absolutely fine. So that, uh, in a way, um, that answers the question, you know, should, should there be, uh, you know, publicly, uh, should there be tongues being spoken in church, declared in church? You know, should we have that? So this gives an answer, you know, yes, you can, but this is how it is done. And if it, if not, let let there be, you know, people praying in tongues. That's absolutely no problem. You know, people can pray, but let it be between them and God. Okay, let it be between them and God. So it's very, very clear. Okay, um, then let two or three prophets speak. Okay, let's read from twenty-nine to forty. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, and that all may learn, and all may be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Then, yeah, so we let's just uh, you know, keep it there. Uh, let's look at that. Those three verses, twenty-nine to thirty-three. So, um, let two or three prophets speak. So just like how you, uh, you know, prayed in tongues, and how someone would bring an interpretation. It says, let two or three prophets speak. So, which means uh, the prophetic gift was also strong. Uh, you know, here it was it was used, um, uh, was uh, was manifesting in in this church, the gift of prophecy, and they were also people who were uh, in the office of the prophet right so uh, who who were identified as prophets okay so he's saying you know uh, let two or three prophets speak okay there are prophets and uh, you know they you know they walk in that regularly and that is their calling so let them speak and let the others judge okay uh, what does that mean that means to to discern okay to discern what is uh, uh, what is right? Uh, you know, is there anything wrong that is being said? Um, is there anything off? Right? What is correct in that? What is off in that? You know. But, so we 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 know that we've studied that um, the prophetic is definitely a wonderful gift, uh, and it comes from him, so from the Lord, and the message, the prophecy, is also. You know, it's inspired by God. It's come from Him, but the vessel through which the prophecy is released is fragile, is human, does have limitations, right? So we judge. So the in the New Testament, this is what we see, and this is a, a scriptural principle for the New Testament church that when the prophecy is released, um, let the others judge. So you hear it. And you judge it, you discern, right? Uh, so uh, you test it. In other words, with the word of God, with the character and the nature of God, and uh, you know, with the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit, you judge it, you discern it. And um, the obviously the the instruction that we see uh, late, uh, you know, in in First Thessalonians five. Let's uh, look at that also. Um, Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5 um, and verse 19 onwards. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Okay, test all things. Hold fast what is good. So, so that's the, you know, uh, the other instruction about prophecy. So we need to judge. We need to test. Um, don't despise prophecies. Hold on to what is good. 
okay um, which means you don't hold fast or you don't have a tight grip on don't even hold what is not good okay hold fast to what is good what what in what is in line with the word what is in line with the character and nature of god what is in line with holiness and so on so um so you hold fast to what is good abstain from every form of evil right so we see this um about prophecy then uh, he goes on to say god is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints so god is not the author of confusion god is the author of peace okay so in between so he is uh, here uh, you know uh, making some statements in the, in the in the verses we've already studied this but let's look at that you know he says let your women keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak but they are to be submissive as the law also says and if they want to learn anything let them ask their own husbands at home for it is shameful for women to speak in church okay uh, verse uh, 34 uh, 35 okay so um, one of the things that we see is that uh, you know so this can be some, sometimes when we take it out of context when we don't look at it Uh, with the rest of the epistle uh, you know it can it can be misinterpreted and misapplied okay so uh, how how it how can it be misinterpreted you know here is paul talking about tongues he's he's talking about uh, prophecies and so on and here you know he's uh, he giving an instruction and in the same way you know he's giving an instruction saying let your women uh, be uh, silent in the church you know, uh, you know. for it is not permitted for them to speak let them keep silent so now what do we make of it you know should if a, if there's a woman in the congregation should they not prophesy should they not pray in tongues should they not you know what is it okay. um you know when we looked at 1 corinthians 11 right when we when we address the whole thing of head coverings headship divine order and when we looked at that we saw that uh, paul addressing uh, something paul saying mentioning that in verse 5 that every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors the lord okay so he's talking about head covering which we saw was a cultural thing and uh, you know it's it's uh, for that particular group for that people etc and also he talks about headship and so on you know uh, who is the head and, and so on so now here he says in addressing that he says for every woman who prays or prophesies so the thing is that yeah in the church there were you know women who were praying and prophesying so he is just addressing you know you pray prophesy but you know with the head, head uncovered then you know it means something in the corinthian culture if the head is uncovered it means something in the corinthian culture if there is a short hair it means something in the corinthian culture but the issue is that you know women were praying and prophesying okay so if someone prays and prophesies so which means that well women can pray women can prophesy so he is saying you know let them keep silent so what does it mean right so um, so when we when we look at it he is uh, referring to is using a word you know let your women uh, and the word of course uh, gune which means uh, a woman it can be a feminine uh, you know it can be like a, it can be a single woman but mostly it is used for for a wife right it can be used for a female gender the word that you use there there uh, gune also it means a married woman okay so here he is referring to married woman because he is saying you know let them ask their husbands at home so he's he's talking to married women women and there is something that is happening there it's not about praying or prophesying there's something that is happening there that they were uh, you know doing something speaking and uh, they were not um, you know they were speaking something which was uh, disrupting Okay, they were speaking something which were disrupting the order and therefore he says keep silent okay but this is not the only time that paul writes and he says keep silent okay like we saw um 
you know earlier in verse 28 itself okay same chapter verse 28 um, if there is no interpreter let him keep silent okay so he's talking about tongues and interpretation he's saying if there is no interpretation let him keep silent again in verse 30 if anything is revealed to another who sits by let the first keep silent when it comes to prophesying ministering you know in prophecy in the church so this is the third time he says uh, be silent and ask your husband at home right so um so this is you know a, a, an instruction not to stop praying or not to stop prophesying and not uh, you know that not to restrict women to to not do these things but we need to look at why he's saying you know why should we uh, why is he saying that uh, they should keep silent so which means that is addressing an issue that here that women were disrupting right they were speaking and asking questions uh, some things that they did not understand and, uh, and 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 so paul is saying you know let them ask later let them ask their own husbands at home let them not interrupt so the word and also one interesting thing is the word that he used there uh, leleo okay uh, he says uh, let your women keep silent for it's not permitted to speak for they are uh, they, it's not they are not permitted to speak okay and now there are two greek words which are used one is um, uh, one is lego okay which is l e g o um, let me just put it here okay um, that is one word and this is another word okay lego so lego is uh, is used where it's a discourse it's a sermon it's a, it's an organized speech right it's a, it's a uh, organized uh, speech um, but lelio is is also used for casual talk okay casual talk or uh, you know just some chatter it's used for that also so so the thing is um, um, to to just declare you know whatever is coming to your mind you're just declaring it you're speaking it so he's paul is also using that word you no know, that's also something to take note of so he's uh, here he's saying uh, let you it is shameful for women to leleo and he doesn't say lego right leleo um, so again you know idle chatter or you know something that is disrupting so so that is the um, context behind let your women keep silent in the church okay so we need to understand this i know uh, you know sometimes when we misinterpret it uh, it's uh, misapplied and it can it can really you know uh, it's it's not the it's not what god wants right to to keep women silent we do not allow women to minister and when we look at the rest of scripture we see that's not the case right we we know of philip's daughters who who prophesied we know of you know uh, you know even right there in 1 Corinthians 11 itself, he, he says, um, women, uh, when they prophesy, when they speak, you know, let their head be covered. So let their head not be uncovered. So uh, that is very clear. Okay. And uh, so uh, it goes on to say, if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for women to speak in, in the church. Or did the word of God come from originally from you, or was it you? only that it reached okay if anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things which i write to you are the commandments of the lord okay so um, if you you know i know that you might be uh, considering yourself as uh, you know prophetic or spiritual um, so you know you you discern this because what i'm writing are the command what i'm writing are the commandments of the lord but if anyone is ignorant let him be ignorant if anyone you know, chooses not to receive this and if you want to stay ignorant you know let him be ignorant okay uh, because uh, if you look at chapter 12 how does it start verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts i do not want you to be ignorant 
okay so he saying i don't want you to be without knowledge i don't want you to be without this understanding right so he saying with regard to spiritual gifts i don't want you to be ignorant so when it comes to the end of chapter 14 says if anyone is ignorant he's explained everything you know uh, how to uh, you know use the what are the gifts how to um, you know use the gifts in a gathering how to use the gifts for a personal edification uh, and is talked about all that explained all that and he said if anyone is ignorant let him be ignorant now after all this if you choose to um, you know be uh, not walk in this not walk in knowledge then you can you know it's your choice right verse 39 therefore brethren earnestly desire okay therefore brethren you know, therefore is you know after all this explanation therefore brethren i've shared all these things i've given all these uh, important things points therefore earnestly desire earnestly to prophesy okay it edifies the church it brings edification it's an it's a you know it's a gift from god it's a it's a manifestation of the spirit it comes from the holy spirit right prophecy so earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues okay so so what was actually happening was maybe people were speaking in tongues and instead of saying you know you you speak in tongues in this way like between you and god people were actually saying you know stop it no tongues creating too much confusion right or you know maybe the prophecy also you know one person prophesying there the other person prophesying there and uh, you know everything happening so people were saying you know maybe maybe they were saying you know, stop it enough of this so he's giving the importance of tongues he's sharing the importance of prophesying and why it is it is necessary it is important it is valuable and he's saying you know earnestly desire to prophesy okay earnestly desire it's a gift from god but it's it requires your desire earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid do not forbid do not stop do not restrict do not forbid people from speaking in tongues okay because they can if there's no interpretation let them speak get in plain tongues between themselves and god was 40 let all things be done decently and in order so all this which is done let it be done decently and in order okay so that's something for us to learn to understand and also to um, to uh, to teach as well you know when there is a uh, when there is some kind of uh, misinformation about tongues um, and misinformation about the gifts um this is this is for us to um, to under, learn and to teach as well you know so in these chapters we also see you know several things several wonderful uh, revelations uh, right from 12 to 14 uh, about the gifts and uh, how you know we should not compare one another because of the gifts or because of the role and function and uh, you know look we should not look down on ourselves because somebody you know, because we compare with somebody and we should not look down on others because you you know we you compare and you think that you're superior all that is you know mentioned in chapter 12 we looked at chapter 13 where it talks about the love of god and the agape love the nature of god's love and the reason he uh, you know he talks about love is that you know you can have these gifts but if you don't have love if you're not expressing love right if you're not showing forth this god kind of love in all these gifts in all these ministering how love is patient and kind and it does not keep a record of wrongs it's not proud right if you don't do that then you're missing the point it is nothing right it is futile it's empty and then he goes on to say what is eternal right this prophecy it will stop tongues it will stop when he says you know it will fail means that it will come to an end there is a limit there is a time because when we go when we see jesus face to face when we are with him there's no need for all these things right but what will remain is love therefore when he goes on to say in verse chapter 14 pursue love go after this kind of love express this kind of love and desire spiritual gifts because 
well, while we are living on earth, on this side of eternity, these gifts are for the edification of the church. It's for the profit of all, right? And and goes on to talk about tongues and prophecy and how you know it can tongues can be assigned to the unbeliever. It can lead a person to Christ, um, and how you know uh, and specifically it's a known language, right? When you when, when tongues come as a known language, and it leads a person person under suppose you know a person knows that language and is stunned how can you speak that language and you say you know i don't know i just i just prayed and you know they come to christ because it's something supernatural and prophecy also right uh, it is again something supernatural uh, revelation by the spirit of god therefore the person who is not a believer uh, now becomes a believer believes in god believes in the supernatural and says hey there is a God who knows me, who knows my deep secrets, who knows the things in my heart. And so therefore, it has to be done in a certain way. And he talks about that towards the end of the chapter. He says, let all things be done decently and in order. Okay. So any questions here? Any questions that you might have? Um, sorry, maybe about tongues, maybe about uh, you know, prophecy uh, or any particular verse. Um, let's take uh, like we have about three more minutes, so let's take the time to uh, you know, talk about that. Any questions? Um, any questions at all? Okay. It's clear. Okay. So, so can women? Pray, prophesy. And okay, here's a question. Okay, if church members are not believing in tongues, how can we engage them speaking in tongues? Okay, so the thing is, um, uh, if people do not believe, okay, so obviously uh, there needs to be teaching. Okay, why? What, what is the reason they don't believe? Because maybe they they it has not been taught, right? So they don't believe reason one. Reason two could be maybe they have a different understanding of it. Okay, maybe they've been uh, you know, uh, taught wrong that it's it's not for today. Um, so maybe because of that. Okay. So there could be many reasons. So the thing is, unless there is teaching and revelation, they cannot step into it. Right. So there has to be teaching from the Word of God. They need to see for themselves in the Word of God. Okay, this is here. Yeah, it's for today. It is there. And when we pray and minister and ask them to you know, step out in faith and actually, you know, they'll just pray, believe, receive and pray in tongues. Right. So, so that's the thing. We, we cannot force it, right. We need to teach. We need to uh, show from the word of God and the Holy Spirit will speak to them and convict them. And also, you know, he will, uh, he, he's careful to perform the word, right. Um, just one verse uh, and then I'll, uh, Aaron, you can ask your question. Just one more verse I'll just share. So Hebrews, um, uh, you know, it says, uh, God also bearing witness, Hebrews 2 and verse 4, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. So God bears witness. So you are, you know, teaching here, you're showing from the word, hey, this is what God has said, this is what God has spoken, and this is what happened in the church, it's for today, and maybe you can share your personal testimony, or this is what happened. Then, what happens is that people, you know, are also built up in faith, and God bears witness to that. God bears witness to your words, and he's saying yes, he's testifying, and his way of saying yes is to release that, right, in, into their lives, and they receive it by faith. Right? Okay. So, Aaron, uh, what is your question, Aaron? Yeah, sure. Uh, Pastor, uh, some yeah. some women of uh, some people they uh, prophesy uh, from A to Z. Na? So, uh, how are we going to know that it's from the Lord or it's from the? Uh... Hmm. So, how do we know? Uh, you know. So that's uh, you know that's how uh, as how we've been learning. Uh, how we've learned in the past also that um, you know certain specific things, right? Uh, so if it's something 
uh, that's you know that will come to pass you know let's say that somebody is sharing and saying okay this is what will happen then when it comes to happen you will know in hindsight right um, but uh, to test it is to definitely against the word of god you know if something is blatantly unrighteous uh, not you know uh, it's totally against the word of god then you then you know you can just totally you know discard it uh, reject it okay um, but the thing is what if it's you know it it, it is mixed you know it it's uh, in the sense it's not wrong right it's not uh, scripturally scripturally wrong but uh, still you know it's like uh, something very specific okay god is calling you to do this god is calling you asking you to go there um which means that you know it can happen right so then uh, it raises a question okay how how do we go about it so then uh, se- several things you know we, we we personally uh we can ask the lord lord you confirm it to my heart you confirm it to my spirit right uh, let there be confirmation so um Uh, the thing is many times prophecy is a confirmation of what god has already spoken to you in your heart well some things come as a surprise like for me uh, when i first heard you know that god is calling me to be a pastor it was a total surprise i was not expecting that i was working in sales in a company and you know i came to all people's church for the first time and i and i get this prophecy right um, that um, this person who was ministering said god is calling you to be a pastor that's the first time every, any, anybody has told me that so for me it was a total surprise okay it was not something that god was confirming it was something new right but god was you know proclaiming that so what did i you know what happened was okay i just kept it aside okay uh, let there be let's let's see you know what will happen to it there's no witness in my heart nothing so I'm just keeping it aside but over a period of time you know this is something very significant it's a life calling um so over a period of time there were there were um, confirmations right um there were confirmation others who would also prophesy the same thing others who would say and the lord also um uh, confirming through his word in my spirit you know through a dream and you know very specific dreams and and things like that right so so we give it time okay um so give it time when we're not sure just give it time ask the lord for confirmation and he will and he will confirm um you know and um, yeah so that's the way to go about it and and also you know is something that is being shared you know is it against the nature of god it's against the character of god um is is it you know is it in line with how the lord has been leading all these years right as a believer god has a certain way of teaching you learning you know you learning from him you hearing his voice god has a way of doing it and he's been leading uh, and leading you to yeah uh, to a certain place right um so if something is totally opposite diametrically opposite you know then you know that hey, i need to give it time well it can be god but i need to give it time i can i need to check and uh, and the lord will confirm right or the lord will not confirm so then you then you know that you can just reject it right so that's the thing so especially when it comes to time when it comes to these major things uh it's it's good to give it time okay uh, and like you said you know specifics details uh, i want you to move to this uh, you know god is calling you to move to this house move to the city move to this uh, you know uh, you give it time ask for confirmation the lord will confirm right um or, you know if he's already confirmed in your heart you just do it that's the thing right okay so we'll take a break oh, okay it's already 9:54 uh, verse 22 okay 14 and verse 22 is it um, therefore tongues are for a sign is that the verse uh, thomas um right pastor yeah okay okay yeah so we'll come back uh, what we do is we'll come back at uh, 10:05 okay i think i've already taken 5 minutes so we'll come back at 10:05 and uh, we'll look at uh, uh, that question and any other question also that you might have okay 